I'm Beverly Tomek. I am Associate Provost and Dean of University College at UH Victoria. But really, more than that, I'm a historian and I always will be. My field involves civil rights and race, race relations in the United States. And part of the reason I went into that was this novel, To Kill a Mockingbird. It is, it has its flaws, it's not perfect, but no book is, but it has been foundational in making me see things through other shoes or through other lenses. And the passage I'm going to read is a big part of why. I remember being in high school, and that's been a long time ago, but I still remember it vividly. I remember these words. So the part I'm going to read is at the end of the book, and it's from the perspective of a young lady who, along with her brother and their best friend, had been sort of spying on a neighbor that they thought was weird or different. And it's at a point in the story where she realizes that he's human too, and he's a good guy, and he's actually saved their lives. So I want to read the part where she has this revelation of what it's like to look from someone else's viewpoint. We came to the street light on the corner, and I wondered how many times Dill had stood there hugging the fat pole, watching, waiting, hoping. I wondered how many times Jim and I had made this journey, but I entered the Radley front gate for the second time in my life. Boo and I walked up the steps to the porch. His fingers found the front doorknob. He gently released my hand, opened the door, went inside, and shut the door behind him. I never saw him again. Neighbors bring food with death and flowers, with sickness, and little things in between. Boo was our neighbor. He gave us two soap dolls, a broken watch and chain, a pair of good luck pennies, and our lives. But neighbors give in return. We never put back into the tree what we took out of it. We had given him nothing, and it made me sad. I turned to go home. Street lights winked down the street all the way to town. I had never seen our neighborhood from this angle. There were Miss Maudie's, Miss Stephanie's. There was our house. I could see the porch swing. Miss Rachel's house was behind us, plainly visible. I could even see Miss Dubose's. I looked behind me. To the left of the brown door was a long, shuttered window. I walked to it, stood in front of it, and turned around. In daylight, I thought, you could see to the post office corner. Daylight. In my mind, the night faded. It was daytime, and the neighborhood was busy. Miss Stephanie Crawford crossed the street to tell the latest to Miss Rachel. Miss Maudie bent over her azaleas. It was summertime, and two children scampered down the sidewalk toward a man approaching in the distance. The man waved, and the children raced each other to him. It was still summertime, and the children came closer. A boy trudged down the sidewalk, dragging a fishing pole behind him. A man stood waiting with his hands on his hips. Summertime, and his children played in the front yard with their friend, enacting a strange little drama of their own invention. It was fall, and his children fought on the sidewalk in front of Mrs. Dubose's. The boy helped his sister to her feet, and they made their way home. Fall, and his children trotted to and fro around the corner, the day's woes and triumphs on their faces. They stopped at an oak tree, delighted, puzzled, apprehensive. Winter and his children shivered at the front gate, silhouetted against a blazing house. Winter, and a man walked into the street, dropped his glasses, and shot a dog. Summer, and he watched his children's heartbreak. Autumn again, and Boo's children needed him. Atticus was right. One time he said, you never really know a man until you stand in his shoes and walk around in them. Just standing on the Radley porch was enough. The street lights were fuzzy from the fine rain that was falling. As I made my way home, I felt very old, but when I looked at the tip of my nose, I could see fine misty beads, but looking cross-eyed made me dizzy, so I quit. As I made my way home, I thought, what a thing to tell Jim tomorrow. He'd be so mad he missed it, he wouldn't speak to me for days. As I made my way home, I thought Jim and I would get grown but there wasn't much else left for us to learn, except possibly algebra. I ran up the steps and into the house. Aunt Alexandra had gone to bed, and Atticus's room was dark. I would see if Jim might be reviving. Atticus was in Jim's room, sitting by his bed. He was reading a book.
seeing things through someone else's eyes or is important and not having the ability to do that would be tragic and reading particularly fiction is what helps us do that and see through eyes we would never otherwise see through.